morning everyone and welcome to today's mark making workshop uh, these workshops run every wednesday from 11 a.m till 1 p.m um, and we explore a range of different mark making techniques using paints uh, different materials such as bubble wrap brown paper and newsprint newspaper um, and ultimately exploring different objects and the textures and the different marks that they make so today I've got things like bubble wrap, some brown paper, I've got a layer of newsprint down um, anyway, and then I've got some smaller pieces of white card, uh, some newspaper, some ready mix paints, and then object wise I've got things like pastry cutters, uh, some plastic cups, a wooden spoon, some sponges, palette knives, um, a whisk, some nail brushes, some just ordinary paint brushes like kids kind of style ones, uh, a comb, a golf ball, some sensory balls which make some really interesting marks and then some tennis balls actually and this one that I've got is actually on string so for this I'm really asking you to use any found objects that you can just find either on a daily walk um, or just any domestic objects that you can find you know within your house as well and then each week we just explore these different materials and different objects and different marks that they make so if you would like to join then they're every wednesday up until the 30th of june um on zoom and just check out the event bright link that i always post uh, on social media for more information and kind of how to how to book as well so i think we're going to get started today um so i'm just going to put my materials here to one side i think Now I know that we have Fiona joining us as well, so um, I'll look forward to that. I think I'm going to start by using my newspaper today. Let's move my camera down a little bit more. So I've just got some newspaper that I've collected and found like envelopes, different um, packaging as well is quite a nice thing to use. I'm just going to start by using one sheet, I think, from this newspaper collection. Now, all these workshops as well are recorded and posted onto my YouTube channel. Uh, so, Designs Hollyver, capital D, H and E. So, if you would like to watch them, then feel free to do so. I'm just going to open it out. So I've just got one sheet of newspaper and then we're just going to experiment with some different uh, mark making objects. So I've got a bath sponge as well that's quite quite nice to use. It's got like the same texture to a nail brush. So to start with I am just going to get my small comb and then I'll show you the colours of my palette. So I've got one palette here with some smaller um, more simpler kind of primary colours and then this one here is a little bit brighter as well I'm not going to tilt it too much because I don't want the paint to dribble off the edge but um, just use any ready mix paint that you can find really uh, any colours will do you don't have to use paint you can also use uh, some different objects or different mediums such as chalks or oil pastels so as you can see I've just got some white ready mix paint just on my comb and I'm just going to start by simply making some nice uniform lines across the page. Now using a comb is a really good way to make some quite formal kind of shapes as well because mark making can be quite busy and quite abstract so it is quite nice to have some kind of pattern and order within there as well. I'm just going to start by just doing the lines all the way up the page. Now these objects have just been kind of collected from around the house and I have bought a few extra things from like Wilco's and Poundland and everything but any objects will really do you know you could go on a daily walk and collect some branches or some twigs um, and create something with that as well. So I'll show you what I've done so far just worked on this newspaper just making a few um 
kind of uniform lines up the page, which is a really nice um, way to apply the paint and everything. And I've just got a makeup brush here as well, actually. And I quite like doing, you know, spirals or like big, large brush strokes, quite gestural. So I think we'll do some of those. And I'm just going to use some of my blue paint. So I've got some nice royal blue paint that I'm just going to apply nice and neatly to the page. Now, as you can see behind me, um, all these works have been created by people within these mark making workshops on a Wednesday um, and then sent to me either via image, you know, on, on a phone or as a postal copy like the ones behind me. And then I can just add them to my kind of DIY gallery wall. And I think it's a really nice idea to send in works and have them featured alongside other people. And I like to think of it as like a little curated mini show. So if you do want to join these workshops, then uh, check out the Eventbrite link. And they're on Zoom every Wednesday, 11 till 1 p.m. And you can have the option to send in some works as well. And I can put them on my wall behind me as well. And also, they really document the workshops really well. You know, the idea of working together and coming together but using social media and using Zoom as a platform to make work and present and show show things and everything. So, again, if you would like to join, then they are open. They're open to anybody. Now, I'm just going to start by using my tennis ball as well. And now I've got two different palettes, uh, one with more kind of primary colours in, and then we've got a green and a white, and then I've got some more pastel colours over there. So I think, it's, I think it's quite a nice way to separate kind of the materials that you're using, just separate them into different colours and everything. So these works are quite abstract, but there is a lot of um, order within the setup of the materials as well. Just simply just using a tennis ball and just dabbing it kind of along the surface and they make some really nice spongy marks and you can also bounce it like this you can also roll it along the surface too so it just starts to pick up some more of those colors that we've applied before so again a mix of dabbing a mix of bouncing the ball and a mix of rolling it so again think about different ways to apply the paint to the surface so that is something that i really want you to think about within this workshop how can you apply that material that medium to to the surface and one thing i have been experimenting with as well is using collage so collecting packaging uh things like bubble wrap corrugated cardboard brown paper newspaper and uh, what else have i been using um envelopes and then just using masking tape or cell tape or anything like that and just sticking them together, really DIY, really practical, to create these large scale kind of irregular surfaces, which I can then make marks on and everything. So again, that is something that you could do. If, if you don't want to just use white card, you can think about what other um, materials you can use. I'm just going to start by using my golf ball as well so the golf ball is going to go into the orange paint and then we're just going to bring it back and then for this i'm just going to start rolling it around the surface and it creates some really cool kind of track marks so this is the point where i need to roll my sleeves up but it creates some really nice track marks and again imprints the texture of the golf ball onto the surface that we're using which is really what we want and then it's quite interesting as well watching the piece develop over time so in the sense that you're adding more layers to it and it's getting busier and more abstract and everything so you can see it changing its state over time so that is another good thing to think about changing state in art two different topics but really really interesting to look at now I am going to start, I think, by using some of my pastry cutters as well. Now these are just plastic cutters that I've got, there's about seven of them here. There isn't about six of them here. Um, I'm just going to use the flat edge as well at the bottom. Oh, I think we've got Fiona joining us today. I'm just going to record on my computer. I 
Hi Fiona. Hi Holly, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. I'm just turning my volume off. Um, I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> Is it, good? is it just the two of us again today? I think so, yes. Liz is on a research trip um, for a week, so doing things with the art doctors. Mm, nice so, one. Oh, I love your hair as well. Have you, did you have it done today, this morning? Yeah, I've just had it Very done. Nice. So it's, it's a little bit, yeah, I've been out in the wind as well. It's quite windy here today, so I'm quite pleased with it. She's taken quite a lot of the lengths off oh, and... Yeah, she did what I asked her to do with the fringe, so I can't complain. <laughs> no, I, start, I started about 15 minutes ago, and I've just started by using newspaper and just experimenting with each object at a time. So, very controlled, controlled chaos today. <laughs> but what materials have you got with you today, Fiona? I think you're muted as well, sorry. Um, I liked the marks that the um, bottle caps made last week okay. round the edges. It's quite it's thing, and it made kind of like tire tracks. Yeah. So I've I've got yeah. another couple, and I'm going to try and create a thing where three of them are rolling like rolling together. So I'll put something through them to kind of see if I can't create something of that. And then yesterday, I finally opened um, these kind of copper. But botanics that I've, I've got oh, wow. so the flowers themselves have gone into um have gone into um a, 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 a little kind of mini tubular, tubular vasey thing that my dad got me mm -hmm. and this is this is like copper so I'm going to see I'm going to maybe do maybe a bit of printing with it but then also I'm quite excited to use yeah. the the edges I think it'll I think it'll create quite quite lovely pathways and things Ooh, exciting. so those are my two new ones oh and also sponge with um texture on this side and smooth on this side and there was one okay. other thing oh i know what it was um toothbrushes i cleared out my um Ooh, my okay. ever-growing okay. wash bags oh i've got a bit of minging actually now that i've just looked at <laughs> that i need to clean that before i use it anyway toothbrushes so i'm gonna i'm gonna try and do some some marks and sprays yeah. and taps with the toothbrushes. So oh, quite a lot today brilliant. for me. Quite a lot of new things. <laughs> oh, exciting! I'm going to set this up, and I'm going to use a large sheet of acrylic paper okay. this week because I've been working on quite thin pieces of paper, like in the recycled stuff last week, and then the. Mm -hmm. What those things called the, the, the flip chart sheet the week before the week before that so i'm now going to go back to a more sturdy acrylic sheet today yeah. Pardon me. Right. now today i've got quite a lot of uh, newsprint so i'm going to be making some slightly larger pieces but again changing the, sh the shape of it a little bit so hopefully that turns out well <laughs> just going to fold over a corner of my piece as well just to make some interesting kind of printing marks as well <laughs> i'm just doing a bit of printing here fiona just folding it over in different Kind of directions and then there we are just folding it over in different directions and making some different kind of colored printing marks in the, the different corners of the work I was, I was paying attention to what you were saying about the corners and how that important that is to you on um, knowing when a thing's finished and yes, um, yeah. a couple of things that I was working on this week and I was like and I need things in the corner what's got mm. what's going on with my corners I suddenly started <laughs> paying attention <laughs> no yesterday I actually um, made some pieces using 
large kind of collage backgrounds uh, so packaging bubble wrap newspaper brown paper envelopes um, and i've done it for um a leeds art gallery response to a natural encounters exhibition looking at like the landscape and the idea of recycling so at the moment that is a big part of the the stuff that i'm looking at so these workshops have actually really helped me in terms of thinking about different materials that I can use. So, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Now, I quite like this newspaper, so I'm going to do another, another sheet of this because it's turning out quite well. I quite like the text in the background and then the idea of creating over it and kind of disguising what's already there and hiding it and layering up with new things so I've recently uh, as recently am i on mute no, no, no. as recently as yesterday i um took possession of some of my dad's prints that he had um um donated to the place that I used to work at and um, they, I'd, I'd asked if I could get a, a, a few of them back because I thought they're sitting doing nothing um, and they're going nowhere at the moment and I think I might like to appropriate some of my dad's work and use it like either as a like collaging or using like stripping it and then weaving it into something um and uh, i haven't spoken to my dad about this though holly and i don't know how he's going to feel about me um ripping up his artwork <laughs> for my entertainment <laughs> so in terms of us discussing you know like reusing things and things that have already got a journey and things yeah. that have already got a story yeah. i'm sort of very clear in my mind that i'm doing this from an entirely um um positive sort of space yes, and i'm yes. just a little unclear how best to present this to my dad that he will understand that i'm doing this for you know sort of the best of motives and um yeah not to not to just rip his artwork up. <laughs> <laughs> no i think i think the idea right. is that the work going on a journey and having a history before it's got to you and then you're repurposing it and transforming it into something different is really interesting Definitely. yeah yeah and um and as i say i just the, the prints have been there for a while and they're not they're not doing anything and they're not likely to be doing anything for a while now um right so what yeah um so i think i just was like i could use those at the moment and also, and this is this is slightly selfish. Um, <laughs> they're all mounted, um, right. so I've, I've honestly I've managed well not managed. They've given me back about fifteen. So there's all these mounts, and I think God, I think what can I do? I could I could actually put those to very good use, repurposing them. And we'll see. So well, at the moment I'm um, using a bit of card and I'm creating some shapes just by using it as a kind of a print. Okay, very nice. And my, do you know my lovely little library card that I've been yeah. using? Yeah. Oh, like using a lot. It's finally kind of packed in and I've <laughs> now moved on to the large the library large card <laughs> so now I officially don't have a library card I'm gonna have to at some point go in and say oh I'm, I've lost my card <laughs> to art I've lost you my are. card to art <laughs> oh, from one art form to another Indeed, yes. Yep. <laughs> That's a bit of repurposing as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Kind of using um, either things that you've collected or things that you've found and then just giving them a totally new um, purpose or, or challenging what we normally associate them with something else. 
Do you think your dad is going to be on board then with the idea? I hope he is. I hope he is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't think that he'll hate it. I, I, he might be puzzled by it. Um, he might be puzzled by it. But I, I think if I can produce like an, an end, yeah, I think if I can produce an end piece that is is understandable to him um, okay. that that would work that's yeah. my dad's a very much a, a landscape artist yeah. and he works okay. in pastels and everything's yeah. quite um bucolic and, and pretty and representational and right. uh, very sort of real yeah there's a tree and it looks like a tree yeah. and there's a river and it looks like a river and yeah, yeah. and it's beautiful my dad's yeah. stuff's absolutely beautiful yeah. but it's not what I'm planning on doing with it no right, so I've, I've laid down some some kind of line line things to be working with okay. and now I think I might try and create my bottle top do you feel like limitations or constraints as to how far you can go with the work? That's quite interesting, the way that you've uh, approached and added the tape to the work. I quite like it. Mm. Gonna... Let me see. Just... Oh, are you going to fold it? Um, I'm thinking of folding it, yeah. At the moment, I've just done some printing. So I've just done some printed bits um, on some white card. And this is actually just being created just using these two tennis balls. So one on string and then one um, one without. And yeah, um, a mixture of bouncing and rolling it around. So I'm thinking now of doing some printing. So folding it maybe in different angles and seeing uh, what I can create. See what turns up. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. I think this, this kind of art art style is very um unknown as well you know it's quite experimental and you you sometimes do things and you don't know exactly how it's going to turn out it's it's a nice See, surprise that, that it works <laughs> that's very that's where your youthful memory will come in handy because i quite often play about and go oh my god that was amazing that's brilliant i love that <laughs> and then I, i'm like how did i do that again yeah yeah, I often look at back at my work and then try and copy some elements from different pieces, um, which I shouldn't really do because I feel like this activity is quite unique and the whole point is you can't recreate these marks again in the same area. So uh -huh. I think that was a bit of a faux pas on my part to try and do that. Um, but yeah, no, it's quite improvised and very experimental. So it's a nice surprise when things do work out and, and you look at it and you think, oh, that, that really works. But then the mm -hmm. trick after that is to know when to stop adding more. And <laughs> I can't do that. Yes, <laughs> yes no, I'm, I'm a bit, when, when do I stop? And when have I stopped? Oh, no, I've broken it. I'll start again. <laughs> So I've now got a very nice range of plastic, Holly, because okay. I know that um, acrylic is not good to be going down our drains. No. Um, so oh, I'm excited. I am so excited for this. Look, I've made it. I've made oh, my wow. thing. I've got three lids. I'd like more, but I'm just being impatient to finish the milk. <sighs> so now whenever we come anything that comes i don't know if i told you this anything that comes out plastic and then flat yeah i'm just kind of saving it That's and then idea. using that yeah. as, my, as my palette rather than having to sort of empty any acrylics down the, any wasted acrylics down the sink yeah not that i waste many acrylics it's got to be honest with you but it's also easy on the washing up that's true <laughs> No, at the moment I've been saving um, just cardboard tubes. So 
uh, different things like this just to make some really different marks as well and just see what else I can add to them to make mm -hmm. different things so maybe using rubber bands as well um, but they could make some nice kind of uniform marks and it reminds me of using the comb as well uh, creating very controlled um, forms onto the work and it kind of mm -hmm. it works well you know when you're using things like this to make direct marks you know printing you know circles or lines in response to creating more abstract backgrounds in terms of flicking paint or dabbing it or bouncing a ball and um, mm -hmm. it kind of yeah it, it, i think it, i think it works really well together although it is more about the process but i do think it also looks good together as well but, mm. Have you had any? It is part, it is part of the process, yeah. but it, it's also part of the end piece. So yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. Have you had any thoughts about getting any more um, ready mix paints or anything? Have you had a look at getting a new paint selection? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think about it all the time. You think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Have you had any luck? Have you got any yet? Or no, I haven't got any yet. No. Um, I think I'm. I think though, so. I have had. A, I have had a look around here and there, and I, I think I agree with you that. Um, oh, where did you get get yours from? Baker Ross. Baker Ross. Baker Ross. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a Baker Ross yeah, order. Baker Ross. Okay. Um, because they've also got some other nice bits and pieces in Baker Ross. Yes. Yeah. They've got a lot of. Um, very different crafting things you know you've got loads of nice canvases and sketchbooks and everything so yeah 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 and i'm gonna get i'm gonna when it's and also at baker ross they have that long roll of paper like the oh, new yeah. almost like the newsprint yeah. yeah definitely um so i'm gonna treat myself to one of those i actually treated myself yesterday to some a, a, a 12 color set of sharpies oh very nice um so they're coming in uh forgot to take my bangles off what did they right i'm gonna sort this out because if i get that off while it's still wet it'll be better than this <laughs> Right, so at the moment I am just experimenting with my brown paper roll as well. So I've just created some coloured um, stripe marks so far. So I'm just going to put my brushes back, just trying to make as little mess as possible. But I've actually created some different kind of stripey marks and I'm going to create on top of that here. Oh, nice. But yeah, the moment Very rainbow. I've just done some rainbow marks just on my brown paper. And then I'm going to add some marks over the top of it. So probably using white or black. And I might use my whisk because I've got the whisk again today. And uh -huh. I've, got the, I've got the nail brushes out and I've got some sensory balls as well that make some really cool like imprints as well. So I think they're going to come out again on this work today. <laughs> Yeah, they're all, it's all coming out. It's all coming have out. You got a, have you got a dog, Holly? I don't, no, I've got a rabbit, but I haven't got a dog, no. <laughs> I just wonder with all the balls, whether it's part of, part of your family home. <laughs> no, sadly not. <laughs> Do you have any pets then, Fiona? Or? No. You don't? No. Um, my husband's... Um, quite allergic to cats and dogs, any, any animals with ah, fur, okay, yeah. but mostly cats and dogs. And we also, we live on a, we live in a third floor flat. Right. Okay. And it's not, it's not, obviously it's not impossible to have pets in a flat, um, but it's, it's quite a, quite a responsibility. Um, yeah. Lots of people have dogs around here, so it wouldn't be too bad. I need something in the background because I'm making a mess. I'm making a mess today. <laughs> I am trying to make today as little mess as possible, but 
I think with this activity, no matter how much you try and control the mess and, and how much you're making, I think it, it just goes to pot. <laughs> And maybe it's about releasing that, not being yeah. in control. Not being in control, yeah. <laughs> right, I know what I'll do that. I've got the white card out as get again as well. I'm just making some printing and different things. I quite like how the texture changes when you start to do some printing. You know, when you start printing from a piece that you've already made, I quite like how it always kind of creates this line texture. You can see the little lines coming through. Yeah. Um, I, quite I, yeah. Quite, I quite like it. On every and is that, from, is that from the text of the newspaper? No, it's from the brown paper. I'm just doing some uh, printing directly from the piece, you know, just holding it down and peeling it away. And each time it always has the same line kind of formation. And I've looked back at other works that I've done using this same method and they're always there, so. Quite like the uh, imprint of a tree yes yeah yeah definitely exactly like that <laughs> they remind me of like veins as well and it kind of gives me a, a realistic kind of feel to the work as well My son, who lives in Australia, um, is um, buying and selling all his Pokemon cards from his childhood. Oh, okay. And um, I, so I've been kind of sorting through them here and sending some of them over for him uh, to do whatever he wants with. And um, I'm hoping that there's going to be like because he's like some of them are just useless they're just um, energy cards so they're not worth anything as no, such no. and I was thinking like when when this process is done whatever's left and that that'll just be getting chucked out I think I'm going to try and make um, a piece of artwork with the remaining Pokemon cards Ooh, that'd be really cool yeah definitely I'll just be like wasted ones not be sort of any any kind of special ones but I thought I might try and <laughs> repurpose those in the it's kind of same way oh this is very satisfying very well. satisfying just added some white marks as well onto that uh, so what i've got in front of me just now is is a sheet of paper that i have simply been whatever i've been working on this week adding just a little bit to here and a little bit to there depending on what colors i've got and what have Ooh. you and at one point this week, I was, I had all my print blocks out. So I have a, a series of like, alf, you know, like the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, and some yeah. prints. Yeah. So I kind of blocked, so I printed some bits on it. And then I've just Ooh. finished colouring in all the spaces. So I'm quite pleased with this piece as well, Holly. Oh, and it's a combination all the way. Oh, I like that. I really with various like different that. bits. So I don't think it's finished, though. I no. feel that I'm just... At the moment, I'm just kind of using up bits of paint. I'm not very good at leaving paint. Now, I quite like the process where you get to the end of an activity and you've got lots of paint left. Something mm -hmm. like this, and then it's just what can you create with this this kind of what? limited selection of colours and different things. I, quite, I think it's quite interesting, although I do tend to not like the pieces that I make from doing that because by then all the colours have mixed together. Um, uh -huh. And for me, I know it's not about what it looks like, but there's something about the colour when I look at the work after, and it either, uh -huh. it either goes or it really doesn't at all. Um, although the colour isn't directly the key kind of important thing about this activity, it's more the process, the experience, um, and doing something like this where you can talk about different ideas. Um, but yeah, there's something about the colour when you look at um, a piece after that you've created and you either like it and it either catches your eye or it really, it really just doesn't. There's something yeah. about the language that these colours um, kind of portray that is, is, is quite something. So that's interesting about you not enjoying too many colours mixed together. Yes. Um, because quite a lot of your work is 
absolutely about mixing the colours. Um, for me, it's more the way they mix when they're on the surface rather than them right. being kind of randomly mixed in the palette and then you're using it. Say if I've got a brush with, I don't know, green paint on or something and mm -hmm. then say dabbing it into some of the white or some of the yellow. Often if you start mixing more than two or three colours together, it starts to go a bit funny and that's more of what I was getting at when it's, right. when okay. it's mixed yeah, in the palette. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, when it's mixed in the palette. I am... Um... I'm not very good at mixing colour in the palette. Okay. You know, if I'm trying to get, um, say, um, like colours of faces, for example, I know that you're supposed to be able to get those from the merest hint of a colour, but I, I'm just not very good at... Um, so I've just made this print on a bit of tissue paper from oh, wow. an, a... a an envelope, oh, I like bubble, that. Oh, bubble wrap like envelope, a, a padded envelope, and then yeah, yeah, oh, over like it like that. that. Oh, I like that. Really nice. Yeah, I'm quite liking that. I don't know whether to go over it a second time or not. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm just kind of a new piece of paper is what I'll do. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. A new piece of paper. So I quite like what we were talking about last week where we were talking about warm and cool colours and the separation in different palettes. That's just um, triggered me to think about that uh, when we were talking about colours just then. Yeah, you, you use a lot of warm colours and I lean very much to the cold colours. Our whole house is um, cold colours, yeah, greens and blues everywhere. Yeah. I'm just thinking, and we've got very light, we've got very pale yellows. That's really, I mean, it's warm, but it's a cold warm. Um, um, except for a bedroom, it's got... Reddish ceiling. Okay, very happy with that. I'm going to put some track marks in that as well. I've actually got as well a layer of newsprint underneath everything that I'm working on. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I might start working on that maybe in about half an hour or so. I'm just working through all the different materials that I can see around me. So this mm -hmm. time, rather than collaging them all together, like you've seen me do, I think last week or the week before, um, mm -hmm. I'm working on them individually today and focusing more on the printing and slightly smaller scale pieces of work, for now anyway. Um, Maybe they'll all join together later on, who knows? That would be something really interesting to do, you know, to join um, the works together after they've been made, um, mm -hmm. rather than kind of constructing a surface to then work on. That could be quite interesting. Joining different spaces together and each individual art artwork will come together as one. That is quite mm -hmm. an interesting way to think about the activity. Right. right. I might just use my nail brush, I think, to apply the paint to this. Oh my gosh, we are on the same wavelength. My my I had just gone. I'm gonna start on the toothbrush right, right now. Okay. I'm gonna use the toothbrush. Yes. And I think I'm gonna get a new colour as well. <laughs> Oh, 
I'm just going to start by kind of pushing, rather than dabbing, just pushing the nail brush from top to bottom. Just so I don't add too much of the paint and it doesn't go too clumsy in the middle of the bubble wrap. I'm just going to just push gently. Now here I've just added as well some white so you can see the, the, the shade of it kind of turning. Mm -hmm. A different, mm -hmm. different kind of mm. tone. So. And is that, is that bubble wrap, where's that from? Um, I've just got it on a big roll here. Uh, I managed to get it from Yorkshire Trading. It's a six, All right. six metre roll. Um, it was £1.49, I think. So, so Very not, good. Not, not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> and I also got some padded envelopes from there um, and some of the brown paper as well. So... I would I would recommend it for for any art supplies or definitely materials at least definitely materials. Mm. Toothbrush hasn't worked as well as I'd hoped actually. It's all landed a bit blobby, so now I'm just spattering with it. Oh, so you're doing a bit of action painting with the toothbrush. Yeah, oh, do you know what? I might sorry. trim it a bit because, because okay. it's one of those pointy ones. Let's trim it a bit, see what happens. Yeah, when I started using toothbrushes, because I got a big pack of them and I thought they'll work, they'll work really well. For me, mm -hmm. they, the ones that I got were quite small, um, but they didn't actually work as well as I hoped either. Uh, but they were, mm -hmm. they were quite small though, so maybe that was... Maybe that was the reason, but I am not too sure. Well, these ones have kind of got, like, they're multi-layered. They're not flat-surfaced. Right, okay. Um, yeah. I think it's no, quite this nice hasn't. This isn't. No, not happy with this at all. Not. I think it's quite no, good to experiment with different materials because, like, when you're using objects, you don't know how they're going to turn out. It's very, It's a very experimental approach to art making. It absolutely is, and quite often things that I've been excited about hasn't haven't worked for me. Between now and whenever it is the end of June, I, I'm de I'm gonna I promise you I'm gonna try the balls again. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Yeah, the right, okay. Brush really, really well for me. Um, for the time being, I will stick with the brush thing, go back to my sturdy hairbrush. Right. Yes, it's much more satisfying. So have you got any breaks away planned, Holly? Um, at the moment, no, not 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 yet, no, not at all. Um, but I do finish uni the week commencing the seventh of June, so we have presentations and then we finish. So in the middle of June, and then that is it until probably the start of September, maybe the middle of September. Um, wow. But yeah, we, I spoke to my tutor last week, and she was like, she doesn't know how it's going to be in September, so studio access and everything it's at the moment a bit up in the air but as, yeah. as for summer breaks um as of yet yeah, no none at all how about you so will you work through the summer i'm i'm thinking yeah i mean i've done a lot of kind of catering work as well as my <laughs> art workshops that i do on a friday so they will be carrying on the craft ones on facebook um with the unique kids charity um at least up until I start back at uni but we're hoping yeah. to maybe go in for a day because I actually haven't seen them face to face it's only been over Facebook you know I, I was employed by them when we all went into lockdown and, and they were looking for local artists to do some sort of workshop every week just to keep the members motivated and, and doing different crafts so I started doing it last uh, last May, so a, a year now, um, mm -hmm. and then we stopped at the end of summer, and then we started again at Christmas. Right. Because uh, they got a grant from BBC uh, Children in Need, 
and the workshops were originally meant to just last up until that summer of last year and then they they, they said to me oh we've, we've got a grant you know could you possibly facilitate or, or do any more workshops and then it just kind of went on from there really <laughs> um, brilliant so yeah so it's it, it's quite good it gets me thinking about new ideas as well because i plan all the different activities each week myself right um, so will that be over the summer i missed that little bit it will be yes yes yeah. so it yeah. will hopefully run over the summer and then i haven't talked to them yet about it but hopefully uh, I will be able to go in in person and, and have a, cra a craft day or half a craft day with them in person. Um, uh -huh. And then I should imagine they'll finish at the end of September when I go back to uni. Uh, but again, that, that, that hasn't been like confirmed yet or anything. Not set in stone. Not yet. And is that the one for people with learning disabilities? Yes. yes. Yeah, that's the yeah. Friday one. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, it is really good. It is. And that would that is that is rewarding, but really it is the sort it is yeah. the sort of yeah. It would be better if you were there in person and definitely, just be able to yeah, yeah re respond to it, the emotional aspect of artwork. Yes, yeah. I mean, I would I would have loved for all of these workshops to be held in person or or, or something physical, but mm -hmm. you know it hasn't been possible. So. At the moment, any work that I've done in the studio has just been solely just solo work. But mm -hmm. I, I, w I was thinking about some sort of live painting or collaborative thing where we make a big piece on maybe some large fabric or, or something, or we all bring an object that we found and then we experiment with that in the space. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, because of, because of COVID, it hasn't, hasn't been possible. <laughs> Um, right. But that is hopefully what I am going towards, maybe mm -hmm. in the final year, uh, something, you know, interactive and in person. Because I've got I've got a lot yeah. of different like documentation you know, with photographs and film with these workshops that I've been doing. Um, so hopefully something in person, something physically in the space together would be really, oh, that, really good. That would be so good. It would be definitely, so good. Definitely. Because art is an interpersonal thing. It's I mean, yeah. It's a community. Yeah. And we don't really have the weather to do things outside, you know, you can yeah, plan definitely. and then the rain will scupper you. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> but I I have been talking about maybe doing uh, some piece on my own but going to a location. So going maybe on a walk or maybe on a hill or something and using mm -hmm. objects and, and different tools around me and natural materials to then make marks on the surface. That is something that I definitely would like to do when, when we get warmer weather. But this week here, it's just been raining, Fiona. It's just we've had a, it's, it's actually pretty today. It's a nice day today. Yeah. But we've had a miserable few days, Holly. It's just drizzled and grizzled and it's been cold and it's <laughs> yeah. been windy. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, nice. and do you know do you know what though? This time last year, uh, we were all in like strict lockdown, um, and yeah. I loved the fact that we we had a great March and May last year, March April May last year. The weather was fantastic, and I think it it kind of saved us from the worst of the mm. the fear. So yeah. maybe it's. I'm grateful that we had the good weather last year, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I was doing um, a lot of bike riding and a lot of walking and stuff. So every time we had really nice weather last lockdown, I was doing things. And also mm -hmm. because lockdown was a new thing, there was a lot of community projects going on. So yeah, people yeah. That I've and people were done, people were trying hard to kind of get on with it, weren't they? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people that I um, do community work with, uh, started doing different projects and we've got a festival called uh, Kendall Torchlight Festival. Um, All right. It's like a procession involving different community groups and normally we would uh, do something in the centre of Kendall and uh, there'd be different arts events going on and everything um, and we would do some performing and the group that I volunteer with in Kendall also um, is for older people but with disabilities so Myself and another local artist do drama, sing and sign, and 
different art kind of craft workshops. Um, mm -hmm. But last year, what we actually did is there was a project called Make the March and it was for World Environmental Day. Mm -hmm. And they were asking, there's a lot of things like worksheets and stuff and online activities now, but they were asking everyone to make a mini protester and say what you like about the environment and being outdoors. And it was targeted mm -hmm. at a, a younger age group, but I think anyone could really get involved. And there was a series of online craft videos and tutorials. Um, mm -hmm. And then at this place called Ragtag Scrap Store, I think I mentioned about the scrap store um, last week with where I got my paints from. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We were holding workshops in person. Just two or three people were allowed in. Um, mm -hmm. And we made a massive cardboard uh, town uh, and we had our protesters standing up in there and we created a film. So what was released online on YouTube for the Torchlight Festival was a five minute film with sound and audio and they involved loads of different community groups to do different things within that. And it was a five minute film from the perspective. So it looked like they were life-size cardboard models walking through um through the town and it, it was really good how they did it we had a filming evening um, sounds brilliant it, it was really fun um and it's certainly a, a new approach to um doing something like that as well you know recreating a large event that couldn't be you know yeah. couldn't, couldn't be put on recreating it in the form of cardboard craft models um yeah and it was still, in, in the imagination. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot then, of, especially last year, last lockdown, um, a lot of people using technology and it was a very new thing. So we were just working out how we can present our work and how, how we can still connect with people, but from the comfort of our own home or our, our own surroundings. So yeah, I think even now it's quite experimental in terms of people running workshops and different things, but I just don't think there's as much about it now because we're all used to it, whereas last year it was a new thing. It was a, a, a new yeah. thing to get used to and adapt to. I, I, was, I was quite resistant to, for example, Zooms. I wasn't really, other than my book club one, I wasn't connecting any wider than that. I wasn't connecting with people that I didn't know, that I didn't already know. Yeah. I wasn't connecting with communities that I wasn't already connected to. And it wasn't until this year, I don't know whether I've told you this, but as as we as we came into 2021 and it became immediate, it became apparent that we have another year of this. It's not this is not going away. Nothing's opening up. There are no music festivals gonna happen this week year again. There, you know, all of the, the yeah. The traditional festivals, you know, that you're talking about, they're they're all still up in the air. We're still going to have to be thinking about creative ways of being together. Um, and I was like, I need, to, I need to just widen my community right now because yeah. honestly, I've yeah. had enough. I need, I need to see new people. <laughs> I need, I need more than this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think, I think these gonna... online arts things have been an absolute godsend this year, yeah. Holly. Uh, yeah, I think I would have. I think I would have gone into a dark place without um, this and others. So, I mean, yeah. I've already started looking. You know how you're on about Eventbrite and having a look at different workshops? I've actually started doing that and I've signed up to a few painting workshops um, mm -hmm. and a few collage, like youth collage events as well. So there's one tomorrow evening, half four till six. Um, so... Again, I'm looking forward to that as well because I haven't done many workshops with people that I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's normally been either with uni or with or me running the workshops or me joining in with people that I already know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it'll be a very new experience for me as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how how they do it as well. You know, different mm -hmm. methods of communication and communicating with an audience. Yeah, yeah, and how, yeah, how do you do it? so are you actually collaging or, or is it a talk on collaging or is it um, like quite a practical we're thing? actually collaging, so it, I think there's going to be a talk at the start um, and then we've been asked to bring a, a, a set of materials, kind of different things, so, you know, glue, scissors, paints, magazines, that kind of stuff, so. Okay. 
yeah, I, I'm I'm interested to see how how it, how it's going to be because I I haven't done any of this yet, so I am uh-huh. quite, I am quite new to joining workshops in this way, and I've signed up to quite a few actually. So um, yeah, different painting workshops and a few drawing ones as well. Um, ah, good one. There's a paint- and are they all in the UK or are some of them elsewhere? They're all in the UK at the moment, yeah. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I definitely need to widen it and have a look at. Even if it's just talks or different things, you know, I think I can learn a lot from just doing that search and having a look at, I guess, different um, art styles and things that I don't normally do. Mm-hmm. You know, I think mm-hmm. I think some of the and it's just things. you know it's something to do. We can't we can't go out to the cinema. We can't go out yeah, to the things true. down to the pub and chat with our pals. You know the things mm-hmm. that we used to, used to do. Go out on dates with your boyfriend. You know, yeah, it's just true. like. Yeah. <laughs> It's just brick all very, else to do. Yeah, definitely. So where's this one tomorrow? What where, where's what time did you say? Half four to half four till six. I I need to have a look at a bit more info about it, but it is a youth collage event. So it said at uh, eighteen onwards. That's what it, that's what it said on 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 the um on the information. But okay, it, it's broadcast from London. It says as well. Um, okay, and is is it a paid event? It's not. It's a free one, actually. So, if you want, I can I can send you the info for it as well. If, if yeah, you yeah, like. I'll have a wee look. At, yeah, that would be that would be good actually because yeah. I've not got an awful lot of time to. I think I'm going to photograph these right now. Oh, brilliant! Thank you. Uh, rather because they're quite they're quite thin, and wispy. I think tomorrow's event for you is on Zoom as well. So. I should imagine it'll be a quite a practical one where they'll have it on gallery view and we can turn our cameras on and everything. So, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, but I'll I'll send you the info for it um, after the workshop if you want. Yes, please do, yeah. please do. That would be really good um, because I'm quite pressed one way or another. Going for a meeting up with a, a couple of people later on for a walk. Okay, brilliant. And then. Then I've got another workshop, hopefully this afternoon. And then I do pricing at Diggin on a Wednesday evening. Except on a except on a Wednesday when I've got book club. So is this workshop this afternoon then? Is this a craft one as well, Fiona, or is it is it a different a different kind of workshop? Um, yes, it's. I think I described it to you maybe a little bit last week. I'm going to just remember I get the light on these a bit better. It's better. Um, Leslie is an art teacher. She's an, well, I'm going to say she's an older lady. She's probably ages with me. Um, but comparison to yourself she's an older lady for sure um and she kind of runs a two-hour session okay um sorry i'm being distracted there's something being delivered <laughs> and i thought i thought it might be my up to um, yeah i thought it might be for me but it sounds far too big for the thing that i expect <laughs> oh my god what is that it's huge What's that? Oh, it's a secret, apparently, Holly. (laughs) Who knew secrets came in such big boxes? (laughs) Oh, it's chairs. (laughs) Camping chairs. (laughs) (laughs) What is what, honey? What's what? What are you having? Um, it's a uh, it's a bed, it's a camping bed. Right. It's recess. Right. SSE. Mm-hmm. 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 What else did I say I was going to use today? Oh, yes, I was going to use this, wasn't I? Oh, 
want something stipply. And I need a very contrasting colour. So yes, I was telling you about Leslie, wasn't I? Yes, yes. Sure. Um, so she runs a tour workshop where she starts off with a little bit of just relaxation and okay. just a little bit of sort of light, gentle, focusing exercises. Uh, and then she'll do some uh, small exercises just to kind of get you into the flow of whatever her... her um, her task is going to be that day and she does a kind of a different thing each week so I guess I suppose a little bit like you were describing yes yeah with the other workshops you know she chooses she chooses whether we're going to be doing landscaping collaging um uh yeah and then she'll lead you there's usually about two a lead up exercise and then a an actual at exercise and then she will give us some extend it extend you know if you wanted to extend it you could do this yeah. or if you wanted to extend it you could do that so it's quite good sometimes i follow her instructions holly and sometimes i don't <laughs> both a wee tangent on myself <laughs> but th that is a zoom where you know there's there's like about there's sort of half a dozen sometimes more people on it and there's a bit right. of chat as you're going along yes that sounds good that sounds really yeah good. and sometimes sometimes she puts us into um into chat rooms so right. you know it's a smaller group um and there's a bit of chat from that I'm just working on my um, newsprint now as well. So I've just got a large roll of this stuff just all over the table. So I'm just, mm -hmm. yeah, seeing, seeing what marks I can make with this. And I think it's quite interesting because I've been working on this as my base. I've already got accidental marks from other pieces that I've been Yes, making. from the previous so, pieces. Nice yes, one. Yeah, so... I do quite like this tennis ball. I've got to say, I do like using it. You're loving that tennis <laughs> ball. I think it's part of your it's part of your uh, art family now. Yes, I do think so too. I, I mean, I've got a lot of objects that I kind of they're my go to ones. I, I know I always say experiment with different objects and everything, but I do have a set of go to kind of things that I know make really good marks. And I think yeah. once you start working with that material over time, you kind of develop an understanding for different ways to use it, um, which is quite interesting, you know, developing an understanding over time with an object, so your relationship with that material. I quite like using a lot of white on my works as well uh, to blend and mix colours together. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've, I'm coming. I'm using more white of late than than I would normally. Um, I wonder if I want more tracks on that, I think this might be done. Use some gold flecks would be nice. We'll see. We'll see later.
and do some black. I'm going to bring some black to the table. And circles. Oh, I've got a really nice uh, bottle top here, Holly, that's got a kind of like a, a, an embossed print on it. I think it said P-E-M-O, P-M-O, something like that. And it's making some really lovely uh, marks. So I've been working on um, a large sheet of newsprint um, for this next one. So there we are. Oh, that is a large. Oh my god, that's so, huge! Yeah, this is roughly the size of it. <laughs> um, I like the ball. I like the ball marks in the blue. That's really that's brilliant. Yeah. What? So I've used a lot of different things here. So I've got the tennis ball, the comb. The nail brush. I haven't used the whisk yet. But mm -hmm. I've used a lot of brush marks. I've used my makeup brush as well, and I've used some pastry cutters um, mm -hmm. for this one. I quite like the different colours as well that have come from it. Yeah, uh, I like the. I like there's a there's a really kind of um, yeah. It draw your eyes are drawn everywhere with yeah, it. Yeah, it definitely takes you in and, and <laughs> quite along. Really nicely. Oh, and the white. Yes, I can see the white now yeah, as well. Yeah, I started to add a lot yeah. of white in just to blend different things together. Um, I quite like a mix of pastel, pastel kind of tones, and then more mm -hmm. kind of vibrant um, effects as well. So. Mm -hmm. yes. And see the red, the red to the bottom of the picture as I'm looking at it. Yes. The the the, the reds slashes how have you made those what what marks have they come from i've actually just used a brush so i just used uh this brush here right okay yep so yep again, just a normal painting and a normal painter's brush um but yeah i think as well the speed and the way that you apply the marks can be totally different so it's not very controlled it was just quite a, a quick gesture so i think mm -hmm. i think you get a nice rush and a nice formation of lines in between it, as well. It's got direction. You can see yeah. where it's going from and where it's where yeah. it's come from. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, yeah, think about speed as well when you're applying um, the different marks as well, for sure. Because I think I think the speed and and the quickness of the work uh, sometimes shows when you look at it after. 
It does look I agree with you. Very, yeah. very speedy, very quick. Um, I'm going to use my um, print thing now on the edges, which is what I wanted to do with it initially. using now the bath brush uh, with some white paint onto some brown paper so again I just got this from Wilco's as well so it's quite a, a nifty device to use as well um, oh lovely yeah, just, a, just some white paint that I'm just adding to um, my brown paper now I quite like the brown paper and then the white and black on top A satisfying sound as well. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Talking of sound, your sound is brilliant today. I haven't had to be doing that. Yeah, on I was, was going to say off mute I sound. don't think you've had to mute it as much, have you today? No, I haven't had to mute it at all today. one I've just started by doing a mix of kind of dabs and then just dragging it along the surface so mm -hmm. yeah so already we've got quite um an abstract looking piece I think, I think I yeah it's quite a, it's quite a, a, a geographical base that you've laid yeah. down on yourself there there's something yeah there's something really quite um you could almost kind of see it in terms of yeah, a geography, a geography of space. I've got some black paint here as well that I haven't touched yet, so... There's <laughs> the time. I am, I am thinking of using the whisk for this as well. I quite, I quite like this whisk, actually. Um, I do quite like it. I think it creates some finer spots in comparison to using a paintbrush as well, which is quite nice and you can do a mix of kind of action painting and then printing with it as well which, mm -hmm. which seems to work quite well Going back to my bottle top tracks. Mm. Might be darkening this up too much, mm -hmm. but I can always put some white on if I need to. Oh, satisfying. 
And this week as well, we've got the gallery wall back up. Uh, I've put all of the, the pieces behind me again, or some of them at least. Yes. I've yeah, put, they're looking I've put good. one of yours up as is well. That, this is that one of mine in the background? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yay! Good one. <laughs> I like the one that's the. Uh, what will it be to the left of mine with all the sort of lines on it? Is oh, that yours? This one here. That one. No, none of these are mine. They're all uh, works that have been ah. sent in, and I've got. I have got a lot more down here in the corner, but I thought oh, I'll put. I'll just put a few up because I started putting loads up before, and they all started falling down. So I thought, ah. oh, I'll choose. I'll choose a small selection. So. But yeah, no, it's actually one of my classmates, uh, one of my friends on my course that has has done it. So nice one. It was part. Of that is, our, I like. I like that one. I like that one. It was part of our interim show, so we had to work in a group of about seven or eight people uh, back in February mm -hmm. for the start of ter the second term. Um, and yeah, we had to respond to the theme of pandemics uh, in one way or another. And I, that's how these workshops actually started, by um, thinking about how artists work during lockdown. And it was more of an experiment just to run a mark making workshop. Um, mm -hmm. And then and just for all ages, so running something that anyone can join in with, just using domestic objects and found objects from home or from a daily walk. And that's mm -hmm. really how it started. And then I thought, oh, I, I seem to be getting a good response from this or oh people seem to like it so i thought oh well i'll start i'll start running them and uh, and yeah I, i'm enjoying it definitely i'm enjoying it mm -hmm. um but they all get recorded as well so i can use it for my own kind of reference as well which is nice so you're kind of writing your own essays as you're going along <laughs> yeah definitely i think it's quite good to listen back at the different conversations that we have each week as well mm -hmm. as different ideas as well so no i think they definitely help in terms of generating ideas and different ways to take the project and my own work as well um so yeah it's definitely definitely helping me so yeah i'm definitely writing writing a statement in some way you know because we have to do um like contextual statements and essays and artist statements so i think it's definitely helping me to <laughs> kind of focus on the, the key elements of the practice and the work and the response from other people for sure yeah and i would imagine that one of the things that's actually quite that is one of the things that's quite difficult to do during a, a pandemic during the isolation you know not yeah. not yeah. Fo having to focus on that um, theoretical side of it must yeah. be quite difficult yeah i mean i know from a lot of people in my course are finding it quite difficult to motivate myself mainly it's mainly to do with the motivation but for me mm -hmm. because i've had these workshops and stuff it's kind of it, it's forced well not forced but it's kind of prompted me to do practical work because i've set a workshop and i've set a time in and i've got like two hours to do something within that time and mm -hmm. and it's kind of kind of prompted me to do practical work and to use that time to do practical things so even if i'm not doing any practical work during the week I was still yeah. that regular contact where I was still engaging with the work and still doing stuff. Um, so yeah, no, it, it, it's great for sure. It's it's really good as well to um, see you joining in and see you um, just enjoying developing like ideas and stuff. And I think you mentioned before about it helping you with other workshops that you've done. It's it's definitely hundred hundred percent. Sure. Yeah, definitely really good. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining. <laughs> You're very, you're very indulgent, and if you need, if you ever need a Wednesday off, so just say, you know, Fiona, I've got other things to no, do today. No, no, definitely <laughs> not. No, I, no, I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> but no, no, I see where you mean. I mean, sometimes it's it, it's hard depending on what your practice is to motivate yourself to do work, and and that is definitely one of the things that people have said because. I think I mentioned that I'm a course rep as well on my on my course, my fine art course. Um, uh -huh. So a lot of the feedback I've had is rather than accessing information, because a lot of people did struggle at the start with working on Microsoft Teams, it's been more uh, they just struggling to motivate themselves because some people aren't doing things like workshop kind of things. 
they're doing mainly mm -hmm. just solo kind of work very whereas mine is very um interactive but in a participatory sense with the audience so i'm not necessarily collaborating with people it's more the audience so that i'm collaborating with so again it's just yeah just prompting me to do something within that time so i think giving myself a constraint of two hours as well is a nice way to uh, think about the task and to think about the limitations mm -hmm. of the activity and the work and yourself with the work because sometimes it can get too much you know so i feel like two hours is enough with the activity before you start repeating yourself and and, and getting, getting a little bit fed up with it so i think sometimes having a bit yeah. of time out and then coming back to it is is definitely what every yeah. artist needs <laughs> i was I, I feel that the two hours is a, a really nice yeah some some weeks it's felt a little long to be honest with yes, you yeah I, but i think I as i've got as i've gotten yeah. used to the style and i've, I've gotten into the style it's it's not so long now i'm just like right what can i do next what can i do next what can i do next yeah, yeah. whereas before i was like well now i've finished my work yeah. what will i what do, do, I do? Yeah. <laughs> whereas now i'm just like ah what next yeah no, well, I, what about that bit of paper i'm gonna cover that bit of paper now <laughs> <laughs> no i think it's really good to like challenge yourself as well and, and bring maybe if you're getting stuck for ideas think about each week using it as an experiment so each week bringing a new set of equipment to the table what can i do with that um yeah so, sometimes i do that and sometimes i do stick to my old favorites because i know you probably know that i've got my favorite objects that i like to use so sometimes i do actually stick stick with them um but i think as long as you're doing practical work and you, you're trying out new things one way or another i think it's okay <laughs> Just to... Well, you'll find a new favourite thing sooner or later. My my today's favourite thing, and I'm absolutely delighted with it, Holly, <laughs> is these three these That's three really bottle tops joined on to my hmm. my earbud thing, yeah. and I've just had a great. Um, these are staying. These are not going anywhere. <laughs> might add to them. I might make four tire tracks. Ooh. Yeah, that's, good. that's a good idea. No, just a feed note from what you're on about before that tracks and um, maybe a golf ball could be something that you could look into using it makes mm -hmm. really good track marks as well it, it it also reminds me of when we were talking about a journey and the journey of the material and the journey that the artwork goes on when you start layering it and it changing over time i think mm -hmm. the track marks really represent the idea of movement as well so I think I, th I think that that is a good material to use, a really good object to use. The golf ball. A golf ball might be yeah. nice. We stay quite close to a golf course. I might see if we go for a walk. I can find find Ooh. one. And you, you can usually find them at the edges. Yeah. I think I've got into printing as well a lot. So creating larger works and then printing on smaller materials. Mm -hmm. um, I also think I've got more into using different surfaces and really looking at the mark making as a process and then constructing a collage surface with different materials as another process. So, um, yeah, it's definitely got me thinking about new things to use and just really emphasising the idea of using recycled materials and repurposing things and transforming them into art ra rather than just throwing them away. So giving, yes. giving everyday objects a new life or a new purpose, in a sense. But, but yeah. And also it means that your art making doesn't break the bank as well. Yeah, that is that is very true. I think I think if you do start um, getting lots of like A1 white card, depending on how big you work, you know, I've started, well, I, I did start originally about getting A1 card and A2 card. And it, it was quite pricey, actually. It was quite pricey. So I think yeah. I think using packaging and using things like newsprint and brown paper and newspaper and bubble wrap uh, can create some really nice textures. Um, and really, I guess, they just look different. You know, each piece isn't the same. You know, it's not all the same size and the same surface area. You've got different mm -hmm. areas and different ways to... To, to experiment on so i think when you start to look at all your works especially for me when i start to look at all of my works in these past few weeks 
I can definitely see a difference in terms of my material choice and the way that I've used masking tape to join them together. It's very DIY, it's very kind of practical and it really emphasizes the idea of using things around you um, and it, for it to be okay to look very DIY and to not look like a professional piece, I think that is okay. And that is really what I wanted these workshops to be about, the idea of just experimenting with the materials and it's okay for it to not look like a proper art piece, you know, because any material really can be art, you know, when you start, when you apply the paint to the surface, you've made art in a sense, you know, it's that, that process of doing and that to pay, what does to pay mean, you know, uh -huh. so again, yeah, the idea of art making and and what is a painting what is a performance yes a yes what is what is beauty as they say is in the yes. art of eye of the beholder yes. art of the beholder yeah, eye of the beholder it's like i think i mentioned before in, in a sense we're both creating or we're both performing in our own environments mm -hmm. so in a way we're kind of performing to a camera in, in in a sense um so again what does what does that mean and with me creating a piece is it a painting is it a performance what is it and in what order does it go so is it more of a performance than a painting or is it more of a painting than a performance and also is the work that i've just done a painting or is it a print so again, again ah again, yes is, is it what is, is it is it collage is yeah, it yeah definitely. <laughs> yeah definitely because um, it really gets you thinking about in the finished outcome and what it is and you know, does it exist as a finished, as a physical piece or a photograph or, an, or a video? And when I look at the photograph of the work, is the photograph separate from the work? So is the photograph an object of the work or is the photograph just the work? So again, what is its status or its representation or its, um, its value? So what, what is it basically? So yeah, the idea of documenting and documenting work and the status and the meaning of the work so yeah it really gets you thinking when you start getting more in depth about this stuff it really gets you thinking about um what the work is you know is it a, a painting is it a print is it a performance you know what have you just made so so what i have just made holly is i cut up a uh Uh, one of these envelopes that has bubble wrap in it. Oh, yes, yes. So it, it created this kind of effect. Mm. It's, it's naturally fallen apart. And then I've done something on one surface, something on the other surface, which has then in itself created a print, a slight print on the other surface. Oh. And I wish I'd used more paint now, and I might go back and put more on. Mm, on both really of them like but i was thinking i was thinking my word if i could get more of these you could do that and then join them all together and make a kind of kind of like a booklet kind of thing yeah definitely like a like a, a zine or something yeah definitely. yeah yeah oh wow oh what a good idea Mm. Okay. Like, like mm. a, a oh, I want, of, want more of these. I'm not going to buy them. I'm just going to wait until they come through. Like a booklet of like textures or a booklet of mark making pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Well, both because it's the mark. It's making marks as we've been doing for weeks, but and it's using. found objects as well. Wish I hadn't used that yellow though. Doesn't work for me so much. I could probably wash that off. I'm at the stage I think now where I am using paints just using leftover paints that I've got I've got a little bit of each colour in my palette so I'm gonna see what I can um, make of that I've got, got my... I'm probably on 
Oh, I might have a look around on my last piece for today, actually. Okay. 